Okay, let's try this little algebra word match game. Let's see how you do. And let me explain uh, how this works, okay? And the whole idea here, of course, is to increase your math um, knowledge or reinforce terms that you need to understand in mathematics. Oftentimes, students will see uh, various things in math. Of course, obviously, I have some here. Uh, but they don't know um, they don't know how to describe appropriately what they're studying. They just know, oh, it's this thingamajiggy, or I'm doing this, and I don't really know what that is. Well, that's not good enough if you really want to learn this stuff. Okay, so what we're going to do here is kind of uh, get you to, um, you know, reinforce, think about some of these terms. And so what we have here is some um, letters. Okay, now these stand for particular algebra words or terms and of course these ones here describe uh, these concepts here so it's going to be your job to figure out the name of the word okay and which uh, initials or uh, letters go with what what term okay so of course i'm going to go through this here in a second but first let me introduce myself my name is john i'm the founder of tablet class math i'm also a middle and high school math teacher and over many years i've constructed um, a ton of online comprehensive video-based math courses. So whether you uh, need to take a full math course um, or need help in your current course, I'm going to leave a link to my math, uh, dis um, math help program in the description of this video. Also, if you do not have good math notes at this uh, current stage in your studies, I'm going to leave a link to uh, my math notes. You can get a pair from um, pre-algebra, algebra 1, geometry, Algebra 2, Trigonometry, but you need to be taking good math notes, okay? And I actually have uh, made several YouTube videos on the importance of taking uh, math notes. you got to do this. But if you haven't been, you certainly need uh, good notes as a reference. You could pick up a pair and you know where to find those. Okay, so let's get into this, all right? So we'll just take it uh, one letter at a time, all right? So... Again, what am I trying to get at here? Okay, well, trying to make it somewhat interesting in math. I know some of you guys think math is boring, but you know, math is awesome, okay? So we have these different things, right? So this right here, for example, we, we would describe, you know, with a particular, you know, uh, mathematical uh, name, okay? An algebraic description, right? You need to know these descriptions because if you're asking for help, you're like, oh, yeah, I'm working on these thingamajiggies. Or, yeah, I'm not sure I'm struggling with this kind of whatever, right? That you need to be paying attention and you get, need to remember these, these terms. The stronger you get these definitions and descriptions down, the better off you're going to be in math, okay? Um, so let's get to it. And we'll kind of mix this up. Let's start with, uh, we'll start with this guy here first, okay? So out of these letters, which one would describe this? We got a P. We got a B, we got a CI, an AV, a QE, and an SI. So maybe if you're already, maybe you're already kind of figuring out some of these, right? And you're kind of scratching some off your list. Uh, so what is this? Well, this is uh, would be best described out of these options here. Now there's two, okay? There's two things you can describe this as that could fit. You might have said polynomial, right? If you were thinking polynomial. That's that's good, but guess what? Uh, B and by the way, the P is not polynomial, right? So I'm just saying. But what's even better is this guy. This is a binomial, okay? Binomial. So this will eliminate the B, okay? So this is a binomial. If you didn't know that, now you do, okay? And we can cross out the B. All right, so. Let's kind of move down this way. We'll go on to this uh, next expression. So what is this? We got these two little bars right here um, encompassing this little negative seven. So any idea? Okay, we got a P left, right? So we already eliminated the B. C-I-A-V-Q-E-S-I. -E what do you think? Okay. Hopefully, you said absolute value. This is the absolute value of negative 7, right? When you have these little bars around a number, it, uh, this means absolute value. And, of course, the answer would be a positive 7. But that's not the point here of this particular exercise. The point is just to get you to identify, oh, that's what this is called. This is an absolute value. So now we can take out our AV. 
Okay, so we got four little um, expressions left, and um, we have the P, the CI, the QE, and the SI. So uh, if you need to kind of you know adjust what you did, if you pick these inadvertently, let's go ahead and move on. All right, so we'll move on to the next problem here. And what is this? Well, it's obviously an equation, right? It, it's definitely an equation, okay? But the problem is I don't have E by itself. If I had E, then I could make a, you know, a good cause or good argument. Oh, that's an equation. And you know what? That would probably be pretty good, but I don't have that, all right? So I'm like, I have these guys. So really what this is, okay, we can best classify this as a proportion, okay? A proportion. A proportion, if you've been following me on my channel, I just uh, uh, did a video not too long ago. I've done plenty of videos on proportions, but a proportion is nothing more than two equal fractions. So I got one fraction here, and I'm saying it's equal to another fraction. By definition, two equal fractions, even if there's a little variable here, is best uh, described as a proportion. So that would, of course, be our P right there. And so we're down to three, okay? So we're down to three. All right, so let's just take a look at these guys. Here I have an equation. So this is some sort of equation, right? This is what this is saying. And then this says what? This has like other kind of symbols. They're not equation symbols, but this also has an equation symbol. So interesting, right? I have my CI, my QE, and my SI remaining. So let's go ahead and tackle this problem here. What is this best described as? Well, uh, this, okay, and we're talking about algebra here, all right? Now, again, if, this was a P, if there was a P here, you could say, oh, this is a polynomial, but that wouldn't be the best description of this because this is an equation, right? Well, a, a polynomial or a second power polynomial like this, okay, is a quadratic situation. But because we have an equal sign here, this is, uh, would be best described as a quadratic equation. And looking at my little list here, you can see, oh, there we have my QE. That's quadratic equation. All right. So um, hopefully you're like, okay, I get the, how this game works. You know, I got to come up with this stuff just to keep you, you know, on your feet, right? Because uh, what I find in, with students is they don't know how to describe what they're looking at. They're like, yeah, we're studying this or this thingamajiggy. Um, like that's, you know, there's a lot of these pattern recognitions in, in algebra, okay? So it's, it's not, you know, I'm not uh, knocking you for not knowing this, but again, you know, we need to practice this so you can, you know, be, uh, be able to identify the concepts appropriately. All right, so we're down to our last two. We have um, CI and SI. Interesting, right? So what do you think? Right, this one might be difficult for you. Well, the, this right here is an inequality, okay? These are inequalities. So this right here, this has an I, so maybe that's an inequality, but this also has an I too. It's, that has an inequality as well. Well, it turns out this particular type of inequality is what we call a compound inequality. So this was our CI. This is a compound inequality. And a compound inequality is where we have like the variable in the center and it's kind of bounded uh, in between two um, values, right? So this is greater than uh, three, and, but less than or equal to 10, okay? So it's like two inequalities is one, we call this a compound inequality. Uh, in terms of inequalities, we have just a regular linear inequality. You have absolute value inequalities. You have different type of inequalities. This particular type right here is best described as a compound inequality. And of course, that leads us to our SI. And obviously, the SI uh, describes this thing. But what does it uh, represent, the S and the I? Well, this would be the slope-intercept okay, equation, right? This is the slope-intercept form. This is the slope of a line. And this is the y-intercept. So this is the slope-intercept equation. All right. So... Hopefully you like this little uh, exercise. Again, you know, uh, uh, practice is how you're going to get better, okay? Uh, but if you don't know what you're even studying because you're like, oh, yeah, I'm studying the thingamajiggy. Uh, I need help with uh, this thing. I remember years and years and years ago when I actually um, 
and did a lot of tutoring just beside even working with math students because when someone was a my math student I knew what they were I knew them uh, personally in terms of hey I knew that individual exactly what they knew and didn't know so even if they couldn't describe it to me I'd be like okay I already know you're having trouble with x y and z but if I was tutoring a new person for example that wasn't my student I'd be like hey what's what are you having difficulty with and they'd be like uh, I don't know the thingamajiggies and the and the and this that and the other thing. I'm like, well, that's not going to help me out. And of course, you know, the better you can know the description of these things that you're studying, you have to know this, okay? And that's why uh, note taking is so important, okay? You know, like, hey, under quadratic equations, you're going to learn how to solve these particular things. If you're looking up, oh, I forgot how to solve this compound inequality, let me go look up compound inequalities or how to use the slope intercept formula. But you get the drift uh, in terms of, hey, what we're going to practice. So if you like this, I think I'm going to do more of these type of exercises. I'll we'll put in some other crazy problems. But um, anyways, practice makes perfect indeed. All right. Uh, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.